Hello everyone, I am Nisha studying PGDM2 at Myra School of Business. Today we have with us Dr. David Patient who, who is an Associate Dean and Academic Director of Lisbon MBA. He has been teaching Organizational Behavior at Myra. Welcome sir. Sir, I would like to ask you certain questions about Myra and your experience here. You have been coming down to Myra since its inception. What excites you to come down to Myra every year? Well, there are a number of, of things that, uh, that bring me back to Myra every year. Um, so it's great to, to come back and to meet uh, some of the people that I've worked with over the last five years. Um, and especially it's nice to see some of my old students, um, both in Myra and, and also this weekend when I gave a talk for Myra in Bangalore. Um, but it's equally nice to uh, and to see what is new at Myra. And I'm always curious to come back to see if there's a new program, um, if the students have launched a new initiative, um, to see how the placement and hiring is going with companies in Myra, and, uh, and to see how the school is, is building and developing and evolving. Um, this year it's, it's especially interesting for me because I've been teaching a new course. Uh, power and influence, and it's a course that, that partly I've developed uh, to teach here for the first time, and uh, and so I've been excited about that. And, and for me, being in India is is a big change. Um, so compared to Western Europe, uh, a lot of things are different. Um, the the color, the food, the diversity of people, and I really enjoy that part of it too. Could you please state your views on immersion model and how it is different from the model you follow at Catholica? Okay. Um, there, there's advantages and disadvantages to, uh, to an immersion model um, and some of the advantages are, are pretty obvious uh, for teachers and students. One is that you have a lot of continuity um, when you're teaching a subject and, uh, and so students are not you know, going from from uh, organizational behavior to finance and then to accounting and then back to organizational behavior. Um, it's nice to, to be able to discuss something one day and then to build on it the next day um, and then maybe to question, review and build on it again the third day when it's still very present in people's memories. Um, it's also important when, when students are learning a new discipline that, that they try and take the perspective of that discipline. So I think it's great if people are, are, uh, are studying finance that they really try and think, you know, like a finance person. Um, and the same would apply to, uh, to areas like, like organizational behavior where for many students it's a different perspective. And if they can put themselves in that perspective for a couple of weeks, um, I think they, they, they will understand it more. Um, it does require some adaptation. I think when, when, when the time is so concentrated, um, I probably don't give as many readings to students as I might if they have weeks, you know, or, or a week in between each class to, to study. The other thing is I, I, I really have to make sure that the students don't fall behind. Because if, if you have uh, a very intensive two-week course and, and if, if some of the students uh, fall behind on the second or third day, they're in trouble. Yeah. And, and so it really means that the students have to stay on top of things, and, but also that I, as a teacher, need to make sure that everyone's keeping up. Because uh, once you fall behind, you know, with this kind of a course, which is, is more of a sprint than, than a marathon, it's, it's more difficult to catch up. Um, admiring, I'm glad to see that some courses are, are being offered in a more Le at a more leisurely pace, but you know, I, I imagine that for my like for many schools and, and especially for many new schools, um, offering these concentrated courses is a way to bring in good uh, international faculty um, who who may be able to take a couple of weeks off, you know, from their institution, um, but but for most of us it would be impossible to take several months off to come here and visit, as nice as that would be. So, so this, is, this is a model, I think, that has advantages and also that allows me to come back on a regular basis. Yeah. 
What differentiates Myra students from students at places you have been teaching? Um, I would say probably not a lot. Um, and in fact, you know, I I welcome each year or, or a lot of several Myra students come each year to Catalica, and so I have the opportunity not only to teach students here but also to observe them in uh, in my usual environment. And uh, and the Myra students fit in very well uh, at Catalica, and they do very well, and they seem to enjoy the experience and and, and really connect with other students. Um, I think students at, at good business schools. Um, are ambitious, they're, they're hard-working, you know, they're open-minded, um, they're focused on technical knowledge, of course, but, but they also want professional development, and, and these are qualities that I definitely see in the Myers students. Um, it's, really, it's really gratifying to, to teach the new course on power and influence here, um, and even though it's an elective, to, to see so many students sign up for it. And, and, and this to me suggests that um, the Myers students appreciate the importance of, uh, of some of these, these soft skills, some of these less technical areas. Um, it may be because most of the students have work experience, and, and of course the PGPX students in the class have a lot of work experience. Um, but this to me suggests a, a balanced approach to business, one that mixes technical skills and, and one that also really focuses on and, and develops uh, some non-technical skills. Could you please elaborate a little on the course you teach here? Okay. In, in the past I've taught an introductory organizational behavior course and, and this year I wanted to take a deeper dive uh, into one topic um, which to me has, uh, has become increasingly important um, and it's power and influence. In organizations, we, we need to get things done. You know, we want to get ahead, and uh, and we need to influence other people. And and this means not only being good at the technical parts for a job, and it means not only doing good work. Um, it also means managing the social and the organizational environment. Um, this is sometimes a topic that people don't discuss much. But, but as I say in the course, power is not a dirty word. It's, it's something that we need to feel comfortable discussing and analyzing um, and strategizing about. Um, and so in, in this course, we, we, we look in detail at topics like persuasion, how to persuade people, how to build and use our social networks to get things done, um, how to use hard and soft tactics to influence people. Okay. Um, how to manage organizational politics um, and also how, how to learn from examples of people who are very good at these things. Um, influence tactics can be learned and, and, and they should be learned because in order to, to get our ideas accepted, in order to, to, uh, to implement things that we want done, um, and achieve organizational goals and, uh, and protect and advance the interests of our team. Um, we really do need to be smarter than we usually are um, about understanding and managing uh, the social environment. Sir, uh, since you have been researching on effective communication and employee motivation, how important is effective communication and employee motivation in our organization? Okay. Um, so there, there's a lot of research that shows that, that employee communication skills are the single best predictor of their career success. Okay, so, so both intelligence and technical skills and how hard people work and their backgrounds. Um, people must be able to communicate well. Okay. Um, fortunately, this is something that, that can be learned. Um, and it's, it's important in organizations to motivate people because perhaps they, there was a time um, when we could control people, when we could tell them exactly what to do and we could simply make sure that they did it. Um, the business reality today is very different. Um, we, we want people not only to do what we tell them to do, but we want them to do it willingly and enthusiastically 
and to have an internal drive so that they're going to make good decisions on behalf of the company. This is what we face much more when, when we delegate decisions to employees and, and when we want them to do extra things. Um, and increasingly as we enter a service culture, I would say. Um, whether people actually want to do things depends a great deal on, on how they're communicated. Um, and so employees are, are more likely to make the effort when things are well explained to them, okay? when, when they're shown appreciation, when they receive performance feedback, when you know, their manager connects what they're being asked to do to, to the goals of the company, um, when things are clearly explained, and, and, and all of these are communication behaviors that can be learned. Um, you know, perhaps I tend to see everything in terms of communication, and, and it would be an exaggeration, even I admit, you know, that, that every problem in an organization comes down to communication. On the other hand, I think that there's no doubt whatsoever that a lot of the, the problems we face in an organization, um, at their base, are, are, are problems in communication, and in order to resolve them, um, probably effective communication would make a really big difference. So the course you teach here, how this course would be helpful to an MBA student who aspires to become a manager? Okay. Um, so, so I think that the course I teach is, is ideal for people who, who, uh, who want to become managers for a couple of reasons. Um, sometimes people imagine that when I become a manager, I'm suddenly going to have a lot of power. And when I become a manager, I'll be able to make decisions, you know, independently, and, and I'll, I'll be able to tell people what to do, and they're, they're going to do it. Um, the reality of management is usually very different than that. And, and so new managers find that they're dependent on a lot of people. Um, for different resources and for different support. And, and, and they'll find that there's more to, to getting things done than telling people what to do. You know, they, they really need to influence and persuade these people. And, and so a new manager faces this, this reality of, of, of not simply being able to tell people what to do, um, and faces the reality of being dependent on other people. Um, in such a situation, it's important to know you know, other than other than my, my formal authority, which which especially as a new manager is very limited, what other sources of power do I have? And and uh, that's very much what, what my course focuses on um, is is to say apart from formal power that comes from the position, what other sources of power do you have? You know, how can you influence people with the strength of your personality, with the social networks that, that you deliver? Um, with the way that you communicate and the persuasion tactics that you use, um, with the way you focus and, and articulate your goals. Um, so, so I think for, for managers, it's, it's especially important. Um, in India, I, I think, uh, new managers are, are going to face some additional challenges. Um, they, they will often be managing a very diverse workforce and, and and so they're going to need to find different ways of connecting with and influencing different people, okay? which is, is, is something that, that, that is addressed in the course. The, the other thing is, it's, it's certainly not easy being a young manager in India who has to manage older, more experienced employees. Um, it's not easy, but this is a situation that I'm pretty certain all of my Meyer students are going to face. And, and the tactics and the insights that you need to get around uh, these difficult situations, um, they, they actually require some sophistication. Um, because telling someone who has been in the company 20 years, you know, that they have to do this because you're their boss, even though you're much younger and you're new, is not a way to get things done. And it's not a way to motivate people. Um, and so it's, it's, uh, it's important to learn. What are the ways that I can learn? How do I understand and influence these people? Um, so I think for, for new managers, it's helpful. But, but I think also the, the toolbox that we provide in this course should be helpful for, for somebody entering any new environment. Okay? Whether it's 
I'm joining a new company or you know I'm, I'm joining a new division in the company um, you know for either situation you you want to be able to understand and to diagnose and to come up with some strategies for how you're going to uh, how you're going to influence people in that environment Thank you so much for the wonderful insight, sir. I'm sure your concepts will surely apply in our practical lives. It was a pleasure to have you here, sir. Okay, thank you. It's always a pleasure to be back. And